Ooh, what you got there? Oh, just some light reading. Pride and Prejudice? The Catcher in the Rye? Wait, 1984? I'm more of a George Orwell fan myself. Ooh, or is it Dune? I heard the new movie's gonna blow my book out of the water. It's one of the latest 2020 political gallop polls. Is that Hemingway? Or one of those magician books from that Just Kidding Lady? No, and no, it's not Harry Potter. It's a political survey and says that 57% disapprove of how the big cheese is handling his job. Wait, 57% of everyone? Well, they asked about a thousand people, and the 95% confidence interval using the sample would be 53% to 60%. 95%? That's like everyone. I thought you said it was 57. 57% of the 1,000 people. 95 is the confidence level for the confidence interval, where 53 is the lower bound, and 60 is the upper bound. This is totally one of those magician books, isn't it? Negative. Put your listening ears on. Here's the deal. So what proportion of the population disapproves? If we could put our nose to the grindstone and figure that out directly, then great. If not, we sample. Who's the population, you ask? It's the group we want to know about. It's where the sample comes from, and it's who the sample is supposed to represent. There's a great video explaining how that works somewhere around here. Anyway, 57% is the proportion of people who disapprove in this sample. So it's a natural guess at how many disapprove in the population. If the sample is random, and is a mini version of the population, great. But we can still do better. It's kind of like asking someone how tall a passing stranger is. You could say, maybe 5'9", but I don't know for sure. Or you could say, probably between 5'7 and 5'11". Both are guesses, but one sacrifices a little bit of accuracy for a more confident answer. Uh, okay, so where does this 95% thing come in? In practice, we could redo the whole sample bit until our fingers hurt and we pull landscaping duty. If we did this over and over again and graphed the proportions of disapproval, you would get a nice bell-shaped graph where the proportion of disapproval for the population is conveniently right in the middle. Okay, so they asked a thousand people. Well, what if they asked more people? The more people you ask, the less the proportions would vary sample by sample. So the graph gets narrower. But if you ask fewer people, the proportions can vary more sample by sample, so the graph will get wider. If you go out two standard deviations from the middle of any normal distribution, you create a range that contains 95% of the values. That means that if you select a random proportion, there's a 95% chance of it being within two standard deviations of the middle. Conveniently, the value we'd like to know. Fun fact number two also means that if we create nets for each sample that are two standard deviations in each direction, 95% is also the number of nets that will overlap with the value we want to know. So when we use samples to create nets using two standard deviations, we know that 95% of the nets will work, which also means that 5% will miss the mark. So the 95% is sort of a success rate when we go about sampling and making confidence intervals. Once we take a sample, the proportion of disapproval and the net from that sample are fixed and lie on that bell curve somewhere. The proportion of disapproval in the population is also fixed, but since we don't know what it is, we can't check to see if Renette has caught it or not. We just know that if we repeated this whole shindig until Ben Stiller is escorting us outside for landscaping duty, 95% of the nets would catch it, and we can only hope that ours is one of those nets. Although using two standard deviations to make the nets is common, it's nothing special. Using more standard deviations would mean wider nets. and wider nets would catch the population disapproval more often. But they make for lousy guesses by themselves. While using fewer standard deviations would mean narrow nets. And although they won't capture the population disapproval as often, 
the guesses are more precise. So nets using two standard deviations are sort of a happy medium. So we don't know how many disapprove in the population? No. Well then, what's with all the math and magic? It's an educated guess, and the process lets us attach a percentage to it. So, 53% and 60% is a guess? Yes. Does it capture the disapproval of the jefe? We don't know and can't know. Like, you can't say? Sort of? Like, a value that shall not be named? If you like this video or would like to hear about other topics, subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment.